going to be a traditional column for us, so uh, very much like the hurricane squirrel that I've done, but I'm not going to put the spirals in the uh, around it after I do the radial stripes. I'll just stop at the radial stripes. It's going to use colors similar to what I used in my first corner pour, so the natural clays. I am also going to have a uh, blue stripe uh, using woad as the colorant. This is my recipe. It is uh, vegan. It is using coconut oil, olive oil, palm oil, RSPO palm oil, and uh, high, ole high oleic sunflower oil. I'm also using some sodium lactate in it, which should help it come out of the mold. And also, this is a fairly uh, soft recipe, so hopefully that'll harden it up a little bit. For fragrance, I'm using Nurture Soap's Old Delhi Station type fragrance oil at a 0.7 ratio. They have recently uh, renamed this fragrance oil, I suppose, for proprietary reason reasons to um, Delhi Junction. But as far as I know, it smells the same. I haven't bought one of the new ones. My colors are going to be red, made with a quarter teaspoon of Australian red reef clay, added to about three quarters of a teaspoon of white kaolin clay. Orange is half a teaspoon of French red clay plus half a teaspoon of Brazilian gold clay. Yellow is a teaspoon of Brazilian gold clay. Green is a little over a teaspoon of French green clay. Blue is about a teaspoon of white kaolin clay and just over a quarter teaspoon of woad powder. And by the way, that one I've added a bit of oil to to uh, get the woad wet. Everything else isn't about a tablespoon or a bit more of water. And then purple is a teaspoon of Brazilian purple clay. I have the fragrance oil in the in my oils at temperatures 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And I've also put a teaspoon uh, per pound of oil, so that's four teaspoons of sodium lactate into my lye water, which is at 110 Fahrenheit. That's cool enough for this recipe. So that's pretty well emulsified. I tend to do with a highly patterned soap. This is going to be a really wet recipe. Um, have six colors here with a little over a tablespoon of water in each of them. And then started out with a um, full water recipe. So I'll hope that'll keep things moving slowly. Just from the way this is feeling, I don't think it's going to be stick blending. It's kind of at a light trace right now. I hope it doesn't move a lot faster than that. It's actually a really nice texture. So I'm going to pour it in rainbow color order, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple.
I like to work with somebody for a corner pour like this because you can pour faster, but I'm working by myself here. The uh, French green is a little bit lumpy. I don't think that'll show up in the soap, but it's kind of interesting to pour it that way. Lumpy because of lumps of clay, not, not from the soap tracing. Anytime you use woad, it's always interesting to see what color it turns out. But one thing you can guarantee is it won't be that shade. That's quite pretty. I wish it would stay that way, but it seems to uh, change as the soap cures. I don't know if that's a pH thing or a water content or what, but it definitely changes. this poured fairly quickly because the soap is definitely thickening up. It's still very pourable, but um, and you can feel it changing. It's time to get moving. I really like that woad color. I wish I could keep it that way. Purple is thickening up the fastest. It's still horrible. Well, the red's going pretty fast too now. I'm going to use all of it this time. Reminded me of pumpkin pie filling. Okay. So often I would repair that center by putting a little more batter in it, but this time I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to use the thick end of a chopstick to make the radial swirls. making these oh, probably an inch apart. And I think I'm going to make 
make some, with the narrow end of the chopstick, make some extra stripes in some of these wider ones just to get a little more um, blending of those colors. This is the freshly poured soap, um, still um, quite soft. I'm going to put it in the oven and uh, see pop it at 170 degrees for an hour or more and then we'll check it in the morning. It is the next morning and this is the soap cooled out of the oven. So it is now pretty hard. I'm going to let it sit for a few more hours before I cut it. Here is the finished soap um, after about 24 hours. It's thoroughly cool and I would say about the texture of uh, a young Monterey Jack cheese maybe. Uh, certainly you can dent it with your thumb but it's certainly hard enough to take out of the mold and, and um, cut. So these are the original bars out of the mold. That is a custom made mold that makes nine, approximately eight and a half ounce bars. What I normally do is cut those in half to make two bars of a little over four ounces. So that's what these are. And I'll probably end up cutting the rest of them at some point. So these are top sides. I did shave some of the uh, roughness off. They had a little bit of soda ash on them. Um, these are sides where the um, cuts were made and I think that's quite attractive and then these are the ends of some of those big uh, 8 plus ounce bars also with a nice pattern on them and then as is usual for a uh, either a corner pour or a column pour, the uh, bottom side, the side that was against the mold floor, is often very predominantly the color, whatever the first color you poured was. So in this case it was red. Um, I could shave some of that off and probably get some variation in color, but I may not. I uh, don't really know yet. So this is probably what I'm going to end up with, the uh, four ounce bars, and that's looking at the top surface.